Lord Rayleigh and James Jeans try to explain the black body radiation curve with the help of equipartition of energy principle of classical statistics but unfortunately Rayleigh Jeans law failed to explain this curve in this video of quantum mechanics we will understand the complete mathematics behind this law and try to find out that at which point this law failed so let's start the video To explain the black body radiation curve from Rayleigh's law consider a large cubic cavity of length A the length of the cavity it should be greater than the maximum wavelength of the radiation so that radiation of all wavelength will be confined between the walls of the cavity in the Rayleigh's law it has been considered that radiation form standing wave inside the cavity the wall of the cavity should be such that it can confine the standing waves of the radiation inside this requires non zero conductive walls if conductivity is zero then the walls will be transparent to radiation hence the conductivity of the walls are non zero so the electric field at the wall will be zero this is a boundary condition rayleigh's law is based on how many modes of electromagnetic radiation are present in the cavity and on an average how much energy is there in the corresponding of each mode so Let's first calculate how many modes of radiation are in the cavity. In order to calculate how many modes of the standing wave will be possible in the cavity, first we will consider those standing wave which are present in the x direction. To be a standing wave between two walls of the cavity, it is necessary to have node points on the both wall. In such a situation, if we assume that the wavelength of the standing wave formed in the x direction is lambda x, then the longest wave possible between the two walls will be lambda x by 2 similarly the next possible wave will be 2 lambda x by 2 length in general the length of the wave in x direction will be nx lambda x by 2 in the same way the length of the wave corresponding to y and z direction will be ny lambda y by 2 and nz lambda z by 2 here nx ny and nz represents the possible number of modes in all three directions these are those waves which are in x y and z directions there will be some more waves in arbitrary directions let alpha beta and gamma are the angles that wave drawn on the axis x y and z respectively to understand this let's take an example of wave having modes nx equals to 3 and ny equals to 2 the line joining of the node points of these two waves project the wavelength of the wave in arbitrary direction let us assume the wavelength is lambda so the projection of the lambda x on the lambda will be lambda x cos alpha as we know that cos alpha can have the maximum value plus 1 so lambda would be equal or less than lambda x in the same way the y and z component of the arbitrary wave would be lambda by cos beta and lambda by cos gamma now if we put the values of lambda x lambda y and lambda z in the equation of number of modes then we will get the generalized equation of nx ny and nz let's square all these three equation and sum up then nx square plus ny square plus nz square is equals to square of 2a by lambda cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma as we know from pythagorean theorem that cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma equals to 1 so nx square plus ny square plus nz square will be equals to square of 2a by lambda now if we replace the wavelength with the frequency nu then this will be equals to square of 2a nu by c after rearranging this equation the frequency nu is equals to c upon 2a under root nx square plus ny square plus nz square till now all possible modes was represented by lines in the cartesian coordinate system if we consider a coordinate system made up of nx ny and nz then the mode will be represented by the dot because each axis of this coordinate system itself represent number of modes in a particular direction 
In this coordinate system, if we draw a sphere of the radius rho, then the rho will be equal to the square root of nx square plus ny square plus nz square, same as r which is equals to square root of x square plus y square plus z square in the Cartesian coordinate system. So, the rho will be equals to 2a nu by c, therefore the frequency nu is equals to c rho by 2a. Now, to calculate the number of modes, we have to calculate number of mode point of the frequency nu in a specified volume. For that, let's draw another sphere of the radius rho plus d rho. We are willing to find out that volume of the region between both spherical shell. The surface area of the inner sphere will be 4 pi rho square. Now, as we have taken only 1 by 8th part of the sphere, so the surface area become 1 by 8 4 pi rho square. Thickness of the region is d rho, so the volume of the shaded region will be 4 pi rho square d rho by 8. Therefore, total number of standing wave in this shell will be 4 pi rho square by 8 d rho. As we know that each electromagnetic radiation have the dual polarity, so the total number of mode will be 4 pi rho square by 8 d rho into 2. This denoted by n nu d nu which represents number of modes of the frequency nu in the frequency range d nu. Now, let's find out average energy corresponding to each modes. For that, Rayleigh's law took the help of equipartition of energy principle. This principle simply say that each degree of freedom have the same energy half kt. If the system has kinetic and potential both energy, then the average energy corresponding to each mode will be kt. The total energy corresponding to the number of modes in the frequency range d nu will be 8 pi a cube nu square kt by c cube into d nu. To calculate the energy density in the cavity, let's divide this energy density with the volume of the cavity. So the energy density will be 8 pi nu square kt by c cube d nu. This indicates that energy density is proportional to the square of the frequency. This is called Rayleigh's law. What is the problem with this law? As this law say that energy density is proportional to the square of the frequency, that means inversely proportional to the square of the wavelength. Now if we draw the graph according to this, then it follow the black body radiation curve at the high wavelength. But due to the nature of square inverse on the lower wavelength, it predicts huge amount of radiation which does not coincide with the actual curve. This prediction is known as ultraviolet catastrophe. Max Planck used this mathematics, made few changes and successfully explained this curve. In the next video of quantum mechanics, we will understand the Planck radiation law.